coming out sort of that way sort of thing. Mm. Yes. So that was part of that at one point. Uh, through a mixture of stony knife and hacksaw blades, we now have, and just ripping it apart, <laughs> and some sanding with, there you go, a bit of sandpaper around my lollipop stick, uh, we now have that that's just been arrow dighted in place so that we can then stick on the little dude which is our little universal joint which is going to be you know, our neck mechanism you can see up there is to have one servo for lefty right and the other servo is going to be pulling for upsy down so we should get pan and tilt on our head so we need to build a little prototyping version of our of our circuit so that we can actually test that our components work. We need to test that the servos work, that our little uh, potentiometers work. These are going to be what's going to control the movement of our, of our doodad. On the actual one, this is going to be done through remote control, so there'll be more on this. But for the moment, I just want to be able to take uh, the movement from a potentiometer that I'll be twisting and put that into the servo of our bird which I've left on the table. Blinky blinky, we should. There you go, twizzle this, get a survey that moves. Happy days. Now, the thing that I want to do, so actually, that looks quite good for my videos. Ooh, that bit's a bit juddery on that survey. This is issues with cheap servers. That needs to happen. These these need toes. So we've got two at the moment, so we need to add whoop. Need to add two extra toes and two extra toes? Yeah, he's got four toes. Need two more toes. Uh three front toes, one back toe. And then these need wrapping in leathery bits to make them look like feet. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to reach underneath the incredibly wall of the camera um, is stick some magnets. Underneath, not that way up, that's why I've written on the magnets that way because that is going to go there. And then on the dress that Beth is currently making, whoop, those with holes in are going to get stitched onto a strap a bit at the shoulder so that we can magnetize the birdie on and off. Aren't we smart? Tootsies, we have the toes made of polymorph. Where's the other one? Whoop, there we go. Tiny polymorph tootsies, left leg, right leg. There we go. Guys, isn't he pretty? So this is the greatest thing in the world. Um, 
Thank you, Mr. Adam Savage. Um, he didn't give it to me. I just learned from his videos. Um, so if he wants to chat... Stop uh, holding it up! Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is about it. This is about it. Uh, he's getting there. He's now got a body made of uh, thermofoam. Just a million different brands. It's just it's foam. You can squish it when you heat it up. I've been using our space heater to warm it up and mold it a little bit so it stays in a nice round shape whilst also cutting chunks out so that it can stay you know, like it is. Um, making sure to cut out areas for the levers to come out and all this bit. Uh, this is all going to be covered with fur that's going to be very loosely attached so that all everything can move. Um, I've also stuck some foam on either side of the servo that's in the head, so the head's a bit more press fit. Um, and then I need to work out what I'm going to do for a beak, and I'm probably going to get some marbles and do something fancy for, for eyeballs. And the tail is done! Yay! Almost. There's like a little bit of metal that's visible, so I need to paint that black. And then, um, yeah, but no, his, his legs look quite nice. He's got his little feeties. He's got, they've got magnets in as well, so you can... This is how we're going to attach it to the dress, because the magnet's in the skirt, and then it'll be able to go... Doing the eye today, and the rest of the head, hopefully. The eye is a button that's squeezed through a patch of leather. Um, by squeezing it through the leather, you end up with those nice lines, and then you can kind of press it down with your thumbnail, and you get more, more lines, so it looks more like an actual natural eye. It's just a literally a button. Um, that's getting glued onto a little bit of wood, uh, which is then going to sit inside the skull, which is then going to pop back onto that server. So this is the bit that scared uh, some dog walkers uh, whilst we were doing it. In order to get to the batteries, um, you need to kind of like grab him and just like fump. Um, the head comes off. So, <laughs> real beaky. So that's just been made out of more foam and then sprayed and you know, all the other gubbins that you normally normally do to stuff to make it look pretty. Um, So the little legs going up, and then there's this big strip. There's this big strip of Velcro going up on the belly. We've got our servo there for the head. Just lefty righty, universal joint, linkages, more linkages, double linkage, one for the tail, one that comes over uh, to the legs. By putting these bends in, you can just kind of bend the, the wire a little bit more or less, and you can change the uh, you know the, the angle uh, that it starts and stops at. Got the tail there we go um, and then the other side whoop, apart from that battery which is held on a little bit of tape this horrifying amalgamation of gubbins um, is actually deceptively simple that is a remote control receiver one of these things which we'll have a proper look at in a second uh, the remote control receiver just has a whole bunch of channels and then you stab your things in the circuit that you saw me building earlier was for just a test whilst I didn't have a remote control system to use these remote control systems, because they're made for model aircraft, can only move the servo sort of from like 90 and kind of 90 degrees either side of 90, uh, sorry, 45 degrees either side of 90, so not a huge amount of movement. And you also can't control smoothness, and you can't put your own sort of control onto it. You can't change the sticks. I mean, you could kind of break the thing open and hack it if you wanted to, but it's a lot easier to do that if you make an Arduino based control system. However, for the amount of movement that I needed on all of the bits on this, that thing does enough of it. And it's much easier to buy something off the shelf whoop, and plug it all in than having to make your own, completely make your own thing. At some point, I do want to make a custom glove to control him, and so that will this will all change. But for the moment, that's that's fine. This is all just kind of shoved in there, taped in place, and then yeah, that tape's not necessary necessary. That it was mostly for the when whilst the body was going on. So there's a bit of foam in there, and that's what I've stuck uh, all of the feathers to. The feathers are the only not faux thing about this. So these are from a uh, fly fishing store on eBay. And they do actual feathers. Nice and shiny. Um, everything else is, is you know, faux fur from fabric land. So it's essentially just a case of cutting out some paper, trying to fit it around the body, and then taking it off, cutting more bits off, sticking it back on. And once you know that you've got the bit that fits and paper, because you've made a paper pattern, cut the same stuff out of fur and then kind of hold it on see if it looks like it fits see if you need to cut any bits off so like around the neck um, my initial one came way too far down down here um, and was covering over the white too much but 
the fur is very forgiving. Like you don't have to get it exactly on, and you can still just kind of flap the fur because it's long. You just flump the fur down, and it looks absolutely fine. The difficulty is at the other end where you've got like the, the nasty bits. But so the head was a little bit more uh, complicated because he's got. It's difficult to make a pattern out of paper that I liked, so uh, I ended up just kind of cutting a tube of fabric. So I just stuck some fabric on that went all the way around and it joins down his chin line. And then you just have to fold the fabric down and then cut the shapes out that you want. And I just kind of cut it as I went until I got the shape that I wanted. And then once I had that shape, I then stuck it all down with contact adhesive. So as long as you don't glue it whilst you're doing it, you can find, you can stick like some of the fur on. So I stuck it on to start with around the head and then just slowly kind of cut bits out and eventually when I got the shape I wanted, stuck it all down. This bit at the back is completely, is just the tube. I don't think I've cut anything out of that at all, but it forms to the neck because I stuck some, the head, the polystyrene conforms. It kind of comes inwards, comes down, which pulls the rest of the fur in. And you want to leave this loose anyway, especially this split at the bottom, so that he can actually look, look down, polystyrene falling off. So he can actually end up looking down. Um, there you go. Then his beak just covers over the bits where all the everything comes together. The beak is foam that's just thunk with some hot glue. And then there you go, one uh, one birdie. He's falling forwards. There we go. <laughs> okay, perfect. And <stop>. oh! <laughs>